Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me. Pray is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for oh, me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Yeah. Your grace is enough. Heaven reaches out to us. Your grace is enough for oh, me. God, I see your grace is enough. I'm covered in your love. Your grace is enough for me. For me. Amen and good morning, church. Good morning. We gather together apart again this morning. We gather as a community of faith to listen and to learn, to give, to grow, and to go forth sharing good news that we have heard today. We gather in this time and this place as this community of faith still to practice our faith. And so won't you stand with me and sing as we call to mind who God is and what he is doing in our lives we gather to give thanks. We gather to give praise and to bring our prayers before our Lord. Coming on the clouds, 
king and kingdoms will bow down And every chain will break His broken hearts declare His praise Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. Our God who calls the saved is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. You know it with power and fight. And every knee will bow before you Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Yeah. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah, roaring with power, fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before you. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain. For the sin of the world, His blood breaks the chain, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, 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 oh. every knee will bow before the Lion. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jenna. I'm the pastor here at Faith United Methodist Church, and I'm so thrilled that you have chosen to gather with us this morning for worship. Uh, we're so excited because this morning we have the opportunity to be united in so many ways, uh, not the way that we're accustomed to, but we're able to be connected through this platform and we're able to be connected through the continued work of our church. Uh, we had 40 students and adults who served Denton County uh, in very safe, masked, socially distanced ways uh, over the last several days. Uh, and we're so proud of the work that they're doing and the work that the staff is uh, preparing for us to do to get ready for school to go back. And we also get to be gathered together through the work of the Holy Spirit and the way that we lift our hearts and our minds to God. Uh, we get to be connected to each other in that way because we believe that God is bigger than distance 
and that God is bigger than location. And so we are so thrilled uh, to be connected with you today. Uh, one way that we will continue to be connected in the days and weeks ahead is that if you have a prayer that we can be uh, lifting up for somebody that you know or for our community, you can fill out the link that you'll find in the comment section. And uh, in that Google document, that comes to us so that we can be in prayer with and for you. And we're a people that believes that prayer makes a difference. And so I'd love if you would uh, trust me, trust us. Uh, in joining with you on your spiritual journey. Uh, it's a gift and a privilege to be on that journey with you. Uh, and so as we journey farther together this morning, uh, let's all lift our hearts and our voices in an attitude of singing and of prayer. Let's pray. Make me broken so I can be healed. Cause I'm so callous, now I can't feel. I wanna run to you with heart wide open. Make me broken. Make me empty. So I can be filled Cause I'm still holding Onto my will And I'm completed When you are with me Make me empty Till you are my one desire Till you are my one true love Till you are my breath, my everything Lord, please keep making me Make me lonely so I can be yours Till I want no one more than you, Lord, cause in the darkness, I know you will hold me, make me lonely, till you are my one desire, till you are my one true love, till you Lord, please keep making me Please keep making me Till you are my one desire Till you are my one true love Till you are my breath, my everything. Lord, please keep making. I know you keep making. Lord, please keep making me. Please keep making me. you pray with me? God, there is so much in the world that is competing for our attention right now. And it's important stuff. It's back to school plans and getting ready for whatever the new normal will be when it gets here. And it's the news and it's the weather and it's our families and our friends and it's our own yearnings and desires. And God, we confess that there are moments more than we'd like to admit in which we are distracted from you. There are moments in our days in which we are 
so overwhelmed with a task in front of us that we forget to look for your movement, that we forget to breathe in the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we forget to love with the love of your son, Jesus Christ. And so, God, we uh, ask for forgiveness in those shortcomings that we experience this morning. And this morning, then, as a response to um, our desire to be better, we set aside all of those distractions and focus on you. We set aside all of the plans and lists and grocery lists and errands to run and house projects to do. We set it all out of the way for just this one small piece of time to give our hearts fully to you. Speak to us, God. Make your love of us known. Make your will for us clear. And give us dreams that match with what your dreams are for us, for our community, for our world, so that we can be a part of making those dreams a reality. And when we feel overwhelmed, when we feel like everything might just be a little bit too much, Help us to remember your love and your care. That you are working in the tiniest details and the broadest strokes. That you are painting and creating and speaking life in all that is around us. May we look for your glory. May we be recipients of your love. And may we have our eyes opened to see you, our ears open to hear you, and our hearts opened to feel you, that we might be overwhelmed not with things to do, but in our worth in you. And the call that you have given each of us to be like your son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth to show us love, to show us sacrifice, and to show us what it looks like to put somebody else before ourselves. And so, God, with this deep desire to be like Christ on our hearts and in our minds, we lift our voices from wherever we are and we pray the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, our scripture reading comes again from the book of Romans chapter 10. And here we encounter a passage in which Paul is writing to the Romans, and he is, um, he's trying to paint a picture of a new way. So hear now these words from Romans 10, verses 5 through 15. You see, Moses writes about the righteousness that comes from the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith talks like this. Don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will go down into the region below, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message of faith that we preach. Because if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and in your heart you have faith that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Trusting with the heart leads to righteousness, and confessing with the mouth leads to salvation. The scripture says all who have faith in him won't be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek because the same Lord is Lord of all, who gives richly to all who call on him. All who call on the Lord's name will be saved. So how can they call on someone if they don't have faith in him? And how can they have faith in someone they haven't heard of? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who announce the good news. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So uh, one of the things that I have just been hearing these days is this common theme. I ask people how they're doing and they say, you know, we're doing pretty well considering we're managing, we're trying to make some plans, we're all pretty tired of the house, but we're doing, you know, our best. We're trying to do our part. And we talk for a little bit and then inevitably the conversation switches and there's this moment in which many, many people begin to say something like, I just feel like everything's a mess. And I think that this is so interesting because every person that I talk to feels like certainly they're the only one. They're the only one with laundry that never quits. They're the only one that as soon as you get the dishes done, it's full again. It, all it takes is one meal, one prep. It, it, it's as if we feel like we're the only ones who are struggling trying to figure out what to do with school or what to do with work or um, whether or not we should keep doing a job that we hate but that brings in the money to be able to sustain our, sustain our lifestyle. So many people right now have adopted this, uh, what they think is secret. I'm a mess. I will confess that I too am a mess. I often, um, I have started since staying home, I can find nothing, ever. I can have six pairs of shoes outside of the closet and I cannot find the one that I want. Finding my glasses, that's a whole different story, right? I too am a mess. But I realize that this is not right now just the cry, the frantic cry of a select few. This is like the norm. Everybody is a mess. And it's not just because life is messy, but because when the world is chaotic around us, um, our lives often just are smaller pictures of the whole, smaller parts of the whole. Uh, I once heard it say that, um, I once heard it said that if you aren't broken, you aren't living. If you haven't had your heart broken before, you haven't lived. If you, right, there are all of these ways that we talk about it. But the truth is that um, we all know brokenness in some form. For some of us, that's a relationship with a parent or with a child. Some, for some of us, that's a relationship with our spouse. Um, for some of us, it's just our bodies seem broken. For some of us, it's just the norm in which we live our life. There is this brokenness that is around us all of the time. But brokenness isn't just about like this physical manifestation of chaos in the world. Uh, brokenness is like this gap between who we want to be, who we strive to be, who we feel like God is calling us to be, and who we really are. And some days that gap feels wider than others, but all of the time there is a gap between who it is that we feel like we should be and who we are when we actually show up. There's this gap between God's perfection and our imperfection. It's just the reality of our world. And yet somehow we manage to look at our brokenness and see it as um, isolating, when really perhaps being broken is the one single most common factor in the universe among people. They're broken. And this is where we find Paul this morning. Paul is talking to the Romans, and he's been really consistent with this message. Um, you know, he's been wrestling with this idea, can God's grace be big enough for everyone? And Paul has decided Yes, yes, grace can be big enough for everyone, even if they're late to the party, even if, fill in the blank, God's grace can be big enough. And so um, Paul, in Romans 10 then, takes on this goal in regards to this idea of grace 
for everyone. Uh, it's this, this goal that Paul has is, it comes from this realization that uh, people have this tendency to look at and experience and hear the Jesus story and think that it's something that happened to somebody else. And what Paul's goal here in this passage to do is to actually take the story and to kind of lay it out and all of the things that are going on with it and help the Romans find their place in that story. So that the story of Jesus wasn't just something that happened for someone else, but was something that happened for them. And it wasn't just a story of something that happened to somebody else, but a story that happened to them, with them. And that is Paul's biggest goal is to help people see themselves and figure out where they fit in this story of Israel and the world and the word. I also think that perhaps this is the most important thing that we as Christ followers do today is to read scripture and to figure out where it is that we fit in this story about Israel and about Jesus and about grace and about all of it. This, this story is a story that feels so familiar, but when we break it down, it's really a story about a people who had nothing going for them. No dreams, no hope, no vision, no knowledge, n nothing. And how these people who had nothing really going for themselves found themselves gripped by a divine call, wrapped in the arms of a savior. It's a story of how a people with nothing wound up having everything, and it was not one thing that they planned. So how is it that we fit in that story when many of us don't know what it's like to have nothing? There have been times in which we have lost. There are times in which we have wandered. There are times in which we've failed. And but my goodness, we know about being broken. But sometimes it just feels like this story is too big, too robust for us to find ourselves in it. So Paul does this really impressive exegetical work right on the fly in Romans 10. Um, exegesis, exe uh, to exegete, is actually just a word that says um, it's, it's about pulling out the meaning of Scripture. So it, it's about taking the historical context and the social context and uh, the current context and kind of pulling out what it is that Paul has for us. That's, that's what exegesis is. And so Paul kind of does this on the fly. And he does this incredible work in which in 21 chapters, I have to read this part, um, he quotes Isaiah six times. He quotes Deuteronomy twice. He quotes Joel, a psalm, oh, and Isaiah again. So Isaiah seven times. In this short period of time, Paul goes back, way back, and pulls all of this knowledge from what has happened before and situates it in the current reality with Paul and with the Israelites and with the Gentiles. And it's all to kind of situate the current reality among the history of what has been before. That is actually exactly what we do every time that we today read scripture. We take this history of what has been before and we read it in context of where we are now to situate ourselves and our place in how we relate to the past. When we look at the past, when we look at scripture, all through the Old Testament, there is this cycle that happens all of the time. When you do good, you get something good. And when you do bad, you, you get something bad. And then you're on the bad side and God says, okay, let's resituate. And he recalibrates and moves everybody back over the good side and says, you got another chance. And he lets them go through the cycle again and they get it wrong. And God says, okay, let's try this a different way. And he moves them back to the beginning and they get another chance and they get it wrong. And they wind up over here. And God says to David, to Abraham, to Moses, to Isaac, to Deborah, right? To all of these people like, okay, Let's try this covenant again. It didn't quite work. 
let's try this again. It didn't quite work. Let's try this again. And so um, Paul is taking this history of this process of not getting it right and God giving another chance and not getting it right and giving another chance. And what he's trying to show is um, this really interesting notion uh, that for us seems more realistic, but for somebody back then was hard to imagine. Uh, Paul is saying that Jesus isn't an example of something that happens over and over and over again in history. Jesus is like the once in a history shot. He's come in once, and it's, it, it's, he's not this general pattern of history. Jesus is like this specific moment in a general pattern of the way that things were, in which the whole world was shifted upside down. And Jesus came once, but was able to do the work of all of eternity. Jesus then uh, comes in, and this work that has been done before was all about law and order. It was about um, 613 commandments about how you should live. And Jesus came, and all of a sudden, Jesus is the goal of the law, and the end of the law, and the fulfillment of the law, and the end of this historical cycle that happened. All of a sudden, the cycle wasn't the meaningful part anymore, that Jesus came and said, look, We're not going to have to redo this covenant every time you mess up. Just come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. The place of the law and these 613 commandments is actually situated then in this story of covenant renewal with God and neighbor, with God and Israel, with God and leader, with God and the world. So what Paul is actually saying is that what the law couldn't do, 613 commandments, they didn't work. They didn't do the job. What the law couldn't do, the incarnation could. What the rules couldn't do, which in essence was the rules couldn't save everyone. But what Paul is saying, you know who could? Christ. Christ came and did away with all of that law and with all of those rules because Christ's grace was sufficient enough to do so, to save the world with love. And and the thing about this that Paul is saying is that uh, he revokes this notion that a human can save herself. It no longer is about doing enough good or um, acting right or never getting it wrong or being perfect or not being broken. What, what, what Paul is saying is that you can't save yourself. Only grace can. Only God can save you. And, and the promise that comes from God saying this is that we don't have to deal with our brokenness on our own. Yes, we are broken. Yes, we miss the mark. Yes, we lose our tempers and our patience, and we hide in the closet, and we say things that we don't mean, and we say things that we do mean, and we learn to regret them, right? Like, yes, all of these things happen, but we don't have to deal with that on our own. Just because you lose patience with your kids doesn't mean that you have fallen out of grace with God. Just because you miss a deadline for work doesn't mean that you are no longer worthy of love. God has come in the middle of all of that and made it good. Made our brokenness stand not on its own, but with the backing of the eternal love of Jesus Christ. So I, so, so I think that this is important for us because basically what Paul has said throughout this whole thing is that the law doesn't stand because the law can't save you. Acting right can't save you. Doing enough community service can't save you, even though it's good. Those are not the things that will make you whole. The thing that will make you whole, that will restore your brokenness, 
that will make you more like the person that you yearn to be is not acting right. It's being right with God. It's about loving neighbor and loving God and choosing to be like Christ. That restoration, that um, reconciliation is what gives us purpose and meaning and worth. But what I think is really important about all of this and this passage in particular is that Paul ends this passage talking about the um, abolition of law and the inclusion of radical grace for all people and all nations and all everyone, right? Paul's ending to this isn't just to say, hooray, you're all saved. Paul actually stops and ends by asking the question. And so if all of us are saved, who then is the one who will be sent into the community to share the good news? How will anybody know about the goodness that you've received in your life if nobody is going to tell? If you keep this restoration to yourself, it doesn't do anybody any good. And he asks these questions. How will they know if there isn't a preacher? Who will preach if nobody is called? I think a lot of times um, it's easy when we hear a word like preacher to assume that this is Jenna's job or anyone else at any other church, any other preacher. But the truth is that a preacher is not just somebody who stands on Sunday morning and puts together a couple bullet points about Jesus and reads the Bible for a living. Uh, this, this, the, the work of the preacher is actually communal. It's actually a call for all of us. We are all called to share the good news. We're all called to be preachers and speakers and sharers and evangelists. We're all called to do this, but it just looks different for all of us. For me, it's standing here on a Sunday morning. And for you, it might just be, I don't know, the person you pass on your walk every day at five o'clock. It could be, the same checker at the grocery store that you see every time you go to get groceries, right? The, the way that we share is different. But the, but the reality about our faith is that sharing this news requires some vulnerability in admitting our brokenness and being able to share on the flip side the restoration of our lives with the promise of Jesus Christ, that our brokenness is not our end, but is our beginning. You see, Jesus came to do the work of eternity, eternal life with God. And and there is nothing that our brokenness, that our mess-ups can do to separate us from that love, that restoration, because God has already done this work in you and in me on our behalf and in our lives. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to do something to deserve it. You simply have to open your arms and receive it. May we, in the reception of this gift of amazing love and incredible grace, may we, in turn, share this news with all that we meet so that through our lives, through our example, the world might see That the brokenness around us is not the end. It's just a resting place. And that God is in the work of restoration and has already begun that work on our behalf. Thanks be to God. Amen. I am, as I say every week, I am just continually grateful for the ways that you show up to support the life of our church in... um, really consistent, really wonderful ways. Uh, We have some projects here that we've been working on for a really long time that are all behind the scenes, but are still happening, slowly albeit, but are still happening. And your gifts to this church go to be sure that those plans can still continue. 
They're different, but they're still good. And we are still dreaming about the big ways that this church can be a beacon of light and hope to everybody in our community. So thank you for your generosity. Uh, during the next song, we'll have an opportunity to reflect on the ways that our lives can be a gift to our community and to our God. And so I invite you to um, open up your heart and, and meditate on the ways that God is calling you to generosity, to generosity of heart and soul, to generosity, the generosity that comes with sharing our story, and uh, to the generosity that allows this church to be a place where all people are treated like children of God, worthy of love and dignity and respect. Thank you for your consistency. Thank you for your generosity. And thank you for being on this faith journey with us. Would you pray with me? Good and gracious God, accept our lives and these gifts to your service so that th uh, through us and through them, the world might see more clearly what it looks like to be loved and cherished by you. Amen. springing up from this old ground out of chaos life is being found in you you make beautiful things you make beautiful things out of the dust you make beautiful things you make beautiful things out of us you make beautiful things you make beautiful things out of the dust
out of the dust God takes the mess of our lives and turns it into beautiful stuff. He makes us new and makes us new and makes us new and he is making us and making new and beautiful things out of the brokenness of our lives. God accepts us as we are and not as we should be for none of us are as we should be. So let us go forth this week remembering what Paul told us that since we are all loved and accepted by God, we are called to share this good news with others and answer the call of this restorative work that Jesus has called us to do. Let us pray that we will continue to be sent out. Lord, let us be called to be sent out. Sing with us, please. Jesus, Lord of my salvation, Savior of my soul, send me out to the world to make you known. Jesus, King of every nation, this world's only hope, send me out to the world to make you known. Send me out to the world. I want to be your hands and feet. I want to be yours every time I speak. I want to run to the ones in need. In the name of Jesus, I want to give my life away. All for your kingdom's sake. Shine a light in the darkest place In the name of Jesus In the name of Jesus Carry to the broken hearted Mercy you have shown Send me out to the world to make you know and To the ones in need a rescue Lead me, I will go Send me out to the world to make you know Send me out to the world I want to be your hand and feet. I want to be yours every time I speak. I want to run to the ones in need. In the name of Jesus, I want to give my life away. All for your kingdom sing. Shine a light in the darkest place. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Here am I, I will go. Send me out to make you known. There is hope, every soul. Send me out. Send me out, here am I, I will go. 
Send me out to make you known. There is hope for every soul. So send me out. I want to be your hands and feet. I want to be your voice every time I speak. I want to run to the ones in need. In the name of Jesus, I want to give my life away, all for your kingdom's sake. Shine a light in the darkest place, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. As you go forward this week, I hope that you remind you are reminded that um, you're not too broken. Your life is not too big of a mess for God to do God's best work in you. And God will do that on your behalf. You have to open up your arms and your heart and be willing to accept the fact that you are good. Your life might be hard, but it's good because it's yours and Jesus Christ is with you. Everywhere that you go, this restoration is not just some pipe dream for some day, but it's something that's available to us here and now. Might you be willing and ready to accept that restoration in all of the different forms that it comes in in the days and weeks ahead? So go forth with the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. Here am I, I will go, send me out to make you known, there is hope for every soul, send me out, send me out, here am I, I will go, send me out to make you known, there is hope for every soul, so send me out. I want to be your hands and feet. I want to be yours every time I speak. I want to run to the ones in need. In the name of Jesus, I want to give my life away. All for your kingdom's sake. Shine a light in the darkest place. In the name of Jesus. I want to be your hands and feet. I want to be your voice every time I speak. I want to run to the ones in need. In the name of Jesus, I want to give my life away. All for your kingdom's sake. Shine a light in the darkest place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.